Did you know that there are several branches of the U.S. military? The military is not just one large force, as most people think. There are six military branches, namely United States Army, United States Navy, United States Air Force, United States Marine Corps, United States Coast Guard, and the United States Space Force. In today's video, we'll be talking about all these branches with the exemption of the Space Force. Hello there, welcome to this YouTube channel. If you are joining us for the first time, hit that subscribe button and toggle the bell so you won't miss out on the next video. Don't forget to smash that like button. YouTube's algorithms love it when you do that. The ranks of all these military branches can be hard to figure out for some people. This video talks about the ranks in each branch and the order in which they progress. The United States Army It is only fair if we start with the Army. The United States Army ranks are divided into three categories. We have enlisted ranks, warrant officer ranks, and officer ranks. We are going to take a look at each category one after the other. Enlisted ranks. Soldiers from this category are regarded as the backbone of the army. Each soldier is trained to carry out a specific task in his unit, and they need to carry out their functions, so the army can work like a fine-tuned machine. In the enlisted ranks, we have three groups. Junior enlisted, E1 to E4. Non-commissioned officers, or NCOs, E4 to E6, and senior NCOs, E7 to E9. Let's look at the ranks in order. Private. This rank is earned by soldiers during basic training. It is the lowest in the enlisted ranks, and it doesn't have an insignia. Private second class. This rank is earned after completing basic training. Many soldiers receive this rank immediately after completing basic training, and it is the first promotion they will get. If they don't earn this rank after completing basic training, they are entitled to get promoted after serving in the Army for six months. Private First Class After serving for a full year in the Army, soldiers will be promoted to this rank. Soldiers in this rank are important to the Army. It is this rank that soldiers will begin to receive missions and complete them. Specialist or Corporal These two ranks are both E4. The only difference is that specialists have fewer responsibilities compared to a corporal. Soldiers are eligible to be promoted to this rank after serving in the Army for two years and after the completion of a training class. However, if the enlistee has a four-year degree, they can enter basic training with the specialist rank. Sergeant Sergeants are leaders. They guide the lower ranks and ensure that orders from the brass are followed by the soldiers. They are essential to the success of every mission. Sergeants are regarded as NCOs. Staff Sergeant This rank isn't so different from the rank of sergeant but a staff sergeant has to be responsible for a larger number of soldiers, equipment, and property. He will also have a sergeant or two under his command. Sergeant First Class This rank signifies that a soldier has 15 to 18 years of military experience. When assigned to this rank, the soldier is now a senior NCO. The role of a sergeant first class is to be the key assistant and advisor to the platoon leader. Master Sergeant at the battalion level, the Master Sergeant is considered the principal NCO. He is expected to lead with the same professionalism as a Sergeant First Class, but they do not have the same roles. First Sergeant The First Sergeant is the lifeblood of a company. He disciplines and counsels the soldiers in the company. He also instructs platoon sergeants and stands as an advisor to the commander of the unit. Sergeant Major A soldier in this rank has the role of the Chief Administrative Assistant for an Army Headquarters. They have the experience and abilities to command other sergeant majors, but can only lead those directly under his command. Command Sergeant Major This is the enlisted advisor to the commanding officer. He also carries out policies and standards that will help the commanding officer. Sergeant Major of the Army There can only be one sergeant major of the Army. He is the overseer of all NCOs. He consults the chief of staff of the Army and serves as the senior enlisted advisor. Warrant Officer Ranks these are the technicians, combat leaders, advisors, and trainers. They are specialists in specific military capabilities or technology. Warrant Officer and Chief Warrant Officer 2 to 5. This is the base level. Soldiers in this rank are the technical and tactical experts of the Army. They support operations from a team through a battalion. The technical and tactical expertise increases with their ranks. The number of soldiers they support also increases. Officer Ranks these are the managers, key influencers, and think tanks of the Army. They hold the highest ranks and have the authority to command all the enlisted soldiers. Second Lieutenant This is the entry-level rank for commissioned officers in the Army. They are addressed as lieutenant and their role is to lead a platoon, so they can develop leadership roles that will help them throughout their career. 
first lieutenant. Soldiers in this rank are also addressed as lieutenant. Only seasoned lieutenants are promoted to this rank. They are usually considered for the role of executive officer, or XO. They must have served for 18 to 24 months. Captain. They are usually in charge and control of a company. They can also decide to become an instructor or staff officer. Major. Majors are field grade officers. They are part of the primary staff for a brigade. You will also find them in task force commands for different kinds of missions. Lieutenant Colonel. They are in charge of battalion sized units, usually more than 400 soldiers and can be as large as 1,000. They can also be assigned as the executive officer for a brigade. Colonel. They are put in charge of a brigade with over 3,000 soldiers under their direct command. A colonel can become chief of staff for divisional agencies. Brigadier General. Soldiers of this rank serve as the deputy commander to the commanding general for army divisions. They are addressed as generals and they assist with the planning of missions for the army. Major General. Soldiers of the rank are two-star generals. They command a division of about 10,000 to 15,000 soldiers. Lieutenant General. These are three-star generals. They command core size units of about 20,000 to 45,000 soldiers. General. The chief of staff of the army is a four-star general. Before qualifying for this rank, one must have 30 years of military experience. Generals command all the operations that fall under their assigned geographical area. General of the army. This rank only exists during times of war, and the last time it was used was during World War II. He must be of equal or higher rank than the commanding officers of the opposing army. The United States Navy Just like the Army, the Navy has enlisted ranks, non-commissioned officers, and commissioned officers. Seamen, Recruit, Apprentice, and First Class These ranks are in the junior enlisted category, with Seamen Recruit being the lowest. As a recruit, they get to pick which roles they want to play. After a role has been assigned to a Seaman, they are promoted to Seaman Apprentice. After all the qualifications have been met, a seaman will be promoted to seaman first class. Petty Officer Third Class, Second Class, and First Class Petty Officers are officially in the fleet. They carry out regular duties and begin to train, assuming leadership roles. Third Class Petty Officers serve as mentors to seamen. Second Class Petty Officers are expected to be more self-reliant. They are mid-grade Petty Officers. First Class Petty Officers are the best of the crop. They play a leadership role in a division team, which could be 5 to 50 soldiers. Chief Petty Officer Senior, Master, and Command Master A Chief Petty Officer is the first point of leadership in the Navy. They are accorded the same respect as officers by the sailors. They work with division officers and take care of equipment or personal issues. Senior Chief Petty Officers have more experience and a higher level of managerial and technical expertise. Master Chief Petty Officers are Department Chiefs. They have the highest authority in each respective department. Command Master Chief Petty Officer has command of all the Master Chief Petty Officers on a ship or at the shore. He serves as the principal advisor to the commanding officer. Warrant Officers and Chief Warrant Officers 1 to 5 Warrant Officers are specialists. There are 27 specialist divisions in the Navy. You can apply to the Navy's Warrant Officer program for any of these divisions after having at least 14 years of technical or leadership experience for that role. To become a Chief Warrant Officer, a minimum of 12 years of active duty experience and 3 years in grade is required. Advancement as a Chief Warrant Officer depends on vacancies and years of experience. Ensign This is the lowest commission officer rank. Navy candidates can earn this rank after completing their commissioning through any of the training schools. Lieutenant, Junior Grade. This is the second lowest officer rank. Ensigns can earn this rank after two years. This role is only maintained for two years. They serve in the fleet as division officers and train for their specialty. Lieutenant, they can also serve as a division officer. They have more responsibility than other low rank officers. They can take command of small ships or submarines. They can act as department heads if the command requires it. Lieutenant Commander, this rank is still a junior officer. They serve as the executive officer on a ship or as a departmental head. They can lead an aircraft squadron, a submarine, or small ships. On SEAL teams, they play the role of executive officer. Commander. This is the lowest senior officer. He can command a fast attack submarine, a frigate, SEAL team, destroyer, or aviation squadron. Captain. Captains are commanding officers. They can command aircraft carriers, a squadron of destroyers, 
submarines carrying ballistic missiles, SEAL groups, submarine squadrons, and any vessel that requires major commands. Rear Admiral Lower Half The Rear Admiral Lower Half holds one star. At sea, he has command of groups like a carrier cruiser group or an expeditionary or carrier strike group. It is the lowest rank in the flag ranks. Rear Admiral Upper Half A Rear Admiral Upper Half holds two stars. He can work as a deputy to higher command and can command anything the Rear Admiral Lower Half can command. Vice Admiral He holds three stars and commands fleets. In regional commands, the Vice Admiral can act as deputy. Admiral This is the most senior rank in the flag ranks. He holds four stars. He can serve as commander of regional commands or as the chairman of Joint Chief of Staffs and Chief of Naval Operations. Fleet Admiral this rank only exists during wartime. It was last held by William D. Leahy during World War II. He holds five stars. The United States Air Force. The Air Force also consists of three categories, enlisted, non-commissioned officers, and commissioned officers. Enlisted ranks. In this category, according to rank from lowest to highest, we have Airman Basic, Airman, Airman First Class, and Senior Airman. The Airman Basic is the lowest rank in the enlisted category. An enlistee will begin to progress after graduating basic training and picking specialties that will define their military career in the Air Force. The Senior Airman is the highest rank in this category, training for their roles as non-commissioned officers by attending a course that lasts for six weeks known as Airman Leadership. Non-commissioned officers, or NCOs. These are senior enlisted officers. They lead and mentor the enlisted, making sure the Air Force works as a unit. We have Staff Sergeant, Technical Sergeant, Master Sergeant, First Sergeant, Senior Master Sergeant, Chief Master Sergeant, Command Chief Master Sergeant, and Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force. Sergeants serve as mentors to all the other airmen. A Staff Sergeant can be a supervisor in this department while pursuing an educational objective. A Technical Sergeant is more skilled than a Staff Sergeant. This role can only be attained by people who have served in the USAF for more than 10 years. He is in charge of about 100 airmen. Master sergeants hold leadership roles. They have duties that include writing reports and memorandums. They are also in charge of welfare for a unit. A first sergeant is a special assignment, who is assigned to flight units and reports directly to the deputy commander. A master, senior, or chief sergeant can be elected to this rank. A senior master sergeant plays a managerial role. He is the operational leader in a unit. The chief master sergeant is a senior NCO. He can serve as staff in high command units. His primary duty is to implement policies and make sure everything functions properly. Command chief master sergeant is a special role that can be filled by chief master sergeants. The chief master sergeant of the Air Force is responsible for every enlistee in the Air Force. He works as an advisor to the Air Force Chief of Staff and the Secretary. This is the highest rank that can be achieved as an enlistee. Commissioned Officers These are senior officers in the Air Force. The list of ranks from lowest to highest are Second Lieutenant, First Lieutenant, Captain, Major, Lieutenant Colonel, Colonel, Brigadier General, Major General, Lieutenant General, General, and General of the Air Force. Their roles and level of command are quite similar to their equal ranking officers in the Army. A colonel is the highest field grade officer, directly below the rank of general. They can command up to 4,000 airmen. Most of the time, they are making decisions for an airbase, or leading military colleges or ROTC training schools. From the lowest general, which is a brigadier general, the influence of command increases. A brigadier general commands a base or an entire wing. He holds one star. The number of stars increases with the ranks, till we get to the general who holds four stars. He is the highest ranking officer in the Air Force. He can perform duties in treaty organizations like NATO. The rank general of the Air Force exists only in times of war. He holds five stars and is solely responsible for wartime decisions. The rank is retired in the Air Force and no officer has held this rank during active duty. The United States Marine Corps. Like the three major branches in the Army, the ranks in the Marine Corps are divided into categories. Enlisted. In the enlisted ranks, we have from lowest to highest. Private, Private First Class, and Lance Corporal. Non-commissioned officers. Under the category of NCOs, we have two ranks, Corporal and Sergeant. Staff non-commissioned officers. In this category of staff NCOs, 
We have from lowest to highest. Staff Sergeant, Gunnery Sergeant, Master Sergeant, First Sergeant, Master Gunnery Sergeant, Sergeant Major, and Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps. The Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps is the highest enlisted Marine in the Marine Corps. He has to be personally selected by the Commandant of the Marine Corps. Warrant Officers In this category, we have from lowest to highest, Warrant Officer 1 and Chief Warrant Officer 2 to 5. We have a special rank, which is known as Infantry Weapons Officer or Marine Gunner. A Chief Warrant Officer can be assigned this rank. Not all Warrant Officers are Gunners. Commissioned Officers In this category, we have Company Grade Officers, which consist of 2nd Lieutenant, 1st Lieutenant, and Captain. Then we have Field Grade Officers, Major, Lieutenant Colonel, and Colonel. Then we have the Generals, Brigadier General, Major General, Lieutenant General, and General. The stars increase as the ranks increase. In the history of the Marine Corps, there has never been a five-star general. Such rank would have to be designated by an act of Congress at any time, but no officer in the Marine Corps holds that rank. The United States Coast Guard The Coast Guard has the same ranks as the Navy. Coast Guard officers serve indefinitely, at the pleasure of the President. However, there are some differences. The rank of ensign in the Coast Guard is equivalent to second lieutenant in other branches. The rank of lieutenant in the Coast Guard is equivalent to a captain in other branches, and they are responsible for other sailors and petty officers. The rank of commander in the Coast Guard is first with the ability to command multiple ships or squadrons of aircraft. They can also serve in the staff of a senior officer on a large ship. Captains are awarded a high level of authority in the Coast Guard, but to be promoted, they have to give exemplary service for several years. Flag Officers The lowest admiral rank in the Coast Guard is the Rear Admiral Lower Half. They command a small flotilla of ships and are only promoted after undergoing a rigorous and intense process. They hold one star. The highest rank in the Coast Guard during peacetime is that of the Rear Admiral. They hold two stars and command air wings and fleets of ships. Rear Admirals in the Coast Guard are allowed to fly a special pennant over any ship or base in which they are serving. We have the rank of Vice Admiral, a temporary rank that only exists during wartime. Only 25% of flag officers in the Coast Guard are allowed to hold three stars. A Vice Admiral in the Coast Guard holds four stars, but the rank is temporary. The highest rank in the Coast Guard is the rank of Admiral. They report directly to the President and are only selected by presidential selection. This rank has four stars and is only used to meet specific needs. If you have enjoyed watching this video on the ranks of all the five military branches, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe. See you in the next one.